Welcome to the K9 Nutrition class. Today we're going to be making a healthy, nutritious dinner for um, for canines. And today, because we've got four pugs, we're going to be making a pug-sized dinner. So today we're using um, quinoa, which is a pseudo grain. You could also use buckwheat or brown rice, as it's a good source of fibre and it contains healthy B vitamins. We also need to have some organ meat in there. In this case, we've got beef liver and beef heart. The heart to support heart health and liver is a healthy source of vitamin A. We then move to our meat. We've got some beef mince, good source of zinc, uh, chicken for poultry oils and some tripe to support the gut. We also, uh, for healthy omega-3 oils, which reduce inflammation, we've got, in this case, salmon and sprats. However, you can also use any other types of oily fish. We then have antioxidants. Antioxidants mop up toxicity in the body, and it's the different colours that display the different types of antioxidants. So today we're going to be using cauliflower, broccoli and carrots. We then include a little bit of seafood, not a lot because it's high in sodium, but it's also a good, um, good source of selenium. So we have prawns and mussels today. And the other things we might have, so we've got organic seaweed to support the thyroid gland, apple cider vinegar, good source of potassium, and a little bit of flaxseed oil, which is um, a vegetable form of omega-3. And then we also have pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, which we will crush, and we'll add a little bit of the powder to the dinner and um, a little sprinkling of seaweed which supports the thyroid gland. Okay. So now we're going to show you how to cook it and put all the feeds together. Okay. Right. We're going to stick the quinoa on to boil and cook. And the key to using the grains is that you should rinse them really well after cooking and cook them thoroughly so that they're digestible. Okay. I like to steam the veg and then add any of the water to the dish because that contains the valuable antioxidants. And it's nice if you can use organic veg, obviously, because it contains less pesticides and chemicals. And we have a nice little organic delivery from Riverford once a week that contains seasonal veg. So Pugster tends to get a range of different vegetables throughout the year. Then we're going to cook the meat and the organ meat together. And we'll try and cook these lightly to retain the proteins. Okay, so while the dinner's ready, getting ready, we've got the seafood, that's done. We've got a bowl to put all our food in, and then we can crush the seeds into a little powder, and we'll add about a teaspoon of that. You break them down so that they can be digested easier, and that's so the compounds can be absorbed better. Um, so the vegetables, we tend to mash them, just to make them easier to digest, especially for the smaller dogs. Uh, for quinoa, we want to rinse it really well. And dogs say that dogs are uh, grains cause allergies. Like a grain allergy, actually, is they do exist, but they're probably much rarer. And really, part of the problem is food intolerances and how you prepare the grains and what type of grains you use. So corn and soya aren't good quality. These are pseudo grains, and brown rice is a whole grain, so it's much healthier. Like we said before, a source of fiber, and B vitamins, and because they're less common in foods, dogs are less allergic. So we put it on a plate so that you can demonstrate and see the feeds. Um, it depends on the individual. My little gang will eat the way through this plate, no problem at all, without the foods being mixed up. And it's interesting, so you can see which foods they like the best and which foods perhaps they need the most. Um, if not, you can mix it and blend it all into a bowl, dependent on the dog. To finish, so we've got, um, we've got mainly proteins. You can see we've got a little bit of um, grain, a little bit of quinoa. We've got some vegetables and then the little bits of seafood I've added. And then what we want to do, add a little small little sprinkle of seeds. So we crush these, like roughly crush them. And you can put a few little pumpkin seeds on, a little bit of flax, and of course, do a little sprinkle of seaweed. There we go. That's literally all you need. And then dogs can make the conversion for ALA, the oil, which is healthy, so a little flaxseed, literally just three or four drops. That's enough. And some people like to, and I don't use it all the time, however, just sometimes a little drop of ACV can be a nice source of potassium. And obviously, again, literally three, two to three, four drops. Okay. 
and how much you've made here? How many, well, how many dinners or how many dogs okay. are you feeding? So um, this is probably like a bigger sized pug, um, like around 10 to 12 kilo. Um, smaller dogs, it would do half a day. But ideally, really, what you want to do is feed 2 to 3% of the body weight. And you can come onto our website and it gives you the exact amount of food in grams. And we also break it down in terms of teaspoons. Uh, this is just sort of um, off the hat example really of the foods that I use and roughly the size so of course it will be different for every dog and you can find out more on our website as we said. And the final thing you need to do is add a little vitamin E because vitamin E is hard for dogs to obtain the amount that they need through food and as in a general rule it's usually added as a supplement. You can use any type of natural vitamin E and they need around 10 to 30 uh, milligrams per meal so we've got a hundred um, milligram capsules and we're literally going to add just one or two drops to the feed and to do that okay. okay and the last thing that we forgot but actually the most important as most diets usually unless you feed in bone are incredibly low in calcium in the case of pugster we need a third of a teaspoon and just mix it into the dinner slightly and that's to supply calcium, which you would supply either from raw bone or you can add eggshell. And all you do is get your eggshells, you cook them in the oven until they're dry, ground them down into a powder and add the powder each day to cover calcium requirements, which you can also check out in, uh, in our books.